Today on Bursic Takes a Trip, we are in Putnam County, New York to discover the trail of Miss Sybil Ludington, the very famous American Revolutionary War heroine. I always had an affinity to Miss Sybil Ludington and actually wrote a paper on her in either third or fourth grade. Uh, my grandparents live in Lake Carmel, New York, which is next to Carmel, New York, um, which is a, right around the area of which uh, Miss Ludington lived during the 1700s. It's a phenomenal story and let's take a trip. Our story begins with General William Tryon, governor of New York who, in April of 1777, led a British expedition into Danbury, Connecticut. The intention of the British force was to burn and destroy Continental Army supplies that were being held in Danbury. Although the British force was successful in burning the American supplies, the alarm began to be spread throughout the countryside. Here I am standing at the original site of the Ludington Mill in what was known as Fredericksburg, New York, or today Ludingtonville, New York, and here in Putnam County. Uh, it was on this location in April of 1777 that a young girl named Sybil Ludington began her famous ride uh, through the local area to spread the alarm that the British were burning Danbury. Uh, her father was the local militia leader and could not spread the alarm himself, so Sybil would go out and spread the alarm to the local uh, farmers and uh, men uh, to, uh, to muster here at this location in April of 1777. The story suggests that the 16-year-old Sybil was rather brazen about being involved in this mission. Sybil grabbed a horse and began to ride the long journey 40 miles south through Carmel, New York, Mayopac, and then in a loop north to Farmer's Mills and back home again. Much of Ludington's original route is today modern roads in this area of New York. During that night in April of 1777, Sybil rode through very treacherous and winding roads, carrying a large stick in her hand. She would call out to the men and the farmers, crying, Muster at Ludington's Mill! The British are burning Danbury! She whacked a large stick onto the doors of many of the farmhouses without ever dismounting from her horse. When Sybil returned home, she was rain-drenched from an evening storm. But Ludington's men, approximately 400 in number, did gather together. They then began their march to Connecticut to encounter the British forces. Ludington's men, along with other American forces, did meet the British in a spirited fight at the Battle of Ridgefield in Connecticut, as well as some other skirmishing. Eventually, the British did retreat back to the sea. Although the British raid was a success, they underestimated the power of the American militia. As for Sybil, tradition suggests that George Washington congratulated her after the ride. In 1784, she married a man named Edmund Ogden. Sybil Ludington is buried in this churchyard, this Presbyterian church in Patterson, uh, New York. Uh, her remains are here, along with her father. Sybil herself outlived the majority of her family, dying in 1839 at the age of 77. In the 21st century, many signs and historic markers dot the landscape on the site of Sybil Ludington's famous ride. This statue of Sybil Ludington was sculpted in the 1930s by the famous American sculptress Anna Hyatt Huntington. It was placed at this location in Carmel, New York in the 1960s. During the bicentennial, the U.S. Postal Service issued a stamp in her honor. And so I salute Sybil Ludington, a regular American girl who took the opportunity to fight for her patriotism and help this country become exactly what uh, we remember it as today, a country that is uh, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men and women are created equal, and that we fought for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Uh, so many people, like Sybil, fought for these freedoms back in 1777 and the entire American Revolution.